sometimes science is puzzling. This is especially true for Elena Conti, director at the Max Planck Institute of Biochemistry. She investigates the form and function of complex proteins in our cells. To reveal their function, she has to know the exact form and composition. Like in a puzzle, you only see the whole picture when you've solved it. I'm very excited to see what turned out to be Elena's lifetime puzzle, her aha moment. Hi Elena, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you Annika, I'm really glad to be here too. Elena, you're working on so-called molecular machines. That sounds like an artificial thing to me. Um, can you explain for us what a molecular machine actually is? Molecular machines are large protein or protein RNA complexes. Uh, they carry out very uh, complicated tasks in our cells. They can make or break other proteins, they can make or break RNAs, but they're very tiny. You know, this one you have here, for example, this 3D model of this, uh, of this machine is 10 proteins, is about 15 nanometers, 1000 times thinner than your hair. Okay, so uh, let's start from the scratch. You already said you brought a 3D model. Can you explain to us what a protein actually is? Mm -hmm. So a protein is a macromolecule in itself, so it's a large uh, molecule. It's made of a chain of building blocks uh, called amino acids, and it folds into specific three-dimensional shapes, and they carry out essentially all functions, all biological functions of our cells and all living organisms. They uh, carry out chemical reactions, they transport material, they signal, they receive signals, so they do lots of cool things. And where do these proteins come from? This is a fundamental principle of molecular biology. DNA makes RNA, makes proteins. Uh, DNA contains the construction plant to make proteins, but uh, it has to be copied into RNA molecules, which then are transported to the ribosome, to the machinery that makes proteins. But you are working on a specific type of proteins. What is its task? So we work on molecular machines that work on RNA. And one of the machines we have been working for a long time is called the RNA exosome. And this is a machinery uh, that degrades many types of RNAs. Why is there a machine that destroys RNA? <laughs> because RNA is transient. So once it has done its job, it has to be degraded. There are also the same machineries can recognize if there is an error in your RNAs and degrade it very fast so that the error is not propagated. So does that mean that every organism has uh, exosomes in its cells? Yes, so it's a very ancient machine. Uh, there are exosome-like complexes in all domains of life. And so we work typically with two types of organisms. We work with Baker's yeast, which is a simple eukaryote, and we work also from, uh, with uh, uh, exosomes or you know, RNA degrading machines from human cells. We take them out of cells so that we can study them at the atomic level. Yeah, but how do you investigate something you cannot see? It's so cool. So we <laughs> use we use techniques from physics, either X-ray crystallography or electron microscopy, to look inside the matter and to try and see. We cannot see the atoms, but we see features of the atoms. So we see electron density, for example. That sounds all very complicated and it's a little hard to get, but I think you brought a video for us, so maybe we can understand it a little better. So this is the electron density. Mm -hmm. actually, of one of the, of the pink one. This is a major protein of the exosome. And here we are zooming in. And so what we want to do is to recognize features. So here now we are recognizing in black, there is a helix. And now we go in and we recognize the features of every amino acid residues and we fit them in. You see small side chain, long side chain, and so on. And we build one by one, residue by residue. We build through the helix over here and then we build slowly but surely the entire molecule and everything has to fit all the residues have to fit there is now something here we haven't built you see there is density this is the rna and now we're going to build it again one by one and now here is the exosome that's working on this large density and this is the ribosome so this is one molecular machine the exosome working on another molecular machine, the ribosome, and it's taking this black chain, the RNA, it's taking it from the ribosome to be trimmed, and it goes down all the way here. And now here we can zoom in into the active site. This is what's going to be cleaved. And how is it cleaved? 
So here in blue is a water molecule, in green is a magnesium ion. These are the residues that come from different parts of the molecules. And what it does is that the water is going to attack. It's going to attack here, it's going to cut one residue off, then the second one comes in and so on and so forth. Wow, that's a very complicated <laughs> 3D puzzle. But at that point you were also able to find out everything about the function, right? Maybe not everything, but certainly a lot. And we have been thinking about this molecule for so long. We've been working on it. This takes years to do. And you have all this observation in your head of how it could work and how do this all be, these pieces go together. And once you build it and you see how the molecule is, you see how the atoms are positioned and you see how it's doing it, it's really, aha, everything comes together. But for that, you had to combine a lot of disciplines, didn't you? That's so cool about this, uh, this field, about structural biology, because the question comes from biology, uh, the techniques come from physics, the repercussions are in medicine, and we want to understand them at the chemistry level. So it's really super cool. So what are the potential applications of your findings? Whom could it help? My lab is interested in understanding the biology, mm -hmm. but what we do has lots of relevance. For example, There is one place here, on this surface here, where there are mutations that cause a disease called pontocerebellar hypoplasia. It's a neurodegenerative disease. Mm -hmm. And now we know what the mutations are, of course, at the DNA level. So we can try and understand if a mutation is here, there is a change in the molecule, what does it affect? Mm -hmm. So this is, for example, one aspect. Another aspect has to do with the fact that uh, our cells can protect uh, the good mRNAs with the COVID pandemic, uh, there has been uh, a development of uh, mRNA vaccines. There are lots of mRNA therapeutics. And one problem is that this messenger RNA, of course, once they are in our cells, they also get degraded. And so if we would understand how our cells can package their own mRNAs to protect them and to avoid uh, that they get targeted by, by this kind of machineries, of course, they would be very useful. Thank you so much, Elena, for sharing your aha moment with us. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for having me here. And we meet again at the next aha moment. Servus! Mm -hmm.